Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about program reviews. So for those of you that don't know, I did a program review on the University of Michigan's program. After I published it, it got a lot of really good feedback from their program, from students that were looking to go to programs. Um, and then I got contacted by a few other programs who were all like, hey, we want to get on this like video series. We want to be reviewed. We want you to rank us, like tell people how great our program is. And so I started talking to a few programs and I've mentioned somewhat what it takes to be ranked and reviewed. And so today we're going to talk about what it took for Michigan to get reviewed. And I'm also going to talk about why I don't like ranking or reviewing programs and some of the details around that. So let's just dive on in. Okay, so for my review of Michigan's program and other reviews of other programs, um, I look at the education, so specifically like the rigor and the staff of the education. Um, I look at the student reviews and the student body and a lot of the student interviews. And then finally, I look at job placement. But again, I dig into all three very differently than the current ranking systems with Quantnet. Um, I'm not a big fan of or risk.net or any of these rankings online. Um, I applaud them though. They have done a good job given what they have. Uh, one Quantnet. reason I do not like ranking programs. So for example, I don't think I would ever come out with a ranking of top 10 or I don't know, anything like that. The reason I don't like this is because to really review a program, so like Michigan's program here, um, I required a few things that these ranking systems just aren't gonna do. Like a lot of universities aren't gonna get involved in. So I require that I come on campus and I actually am standing in your classroom, listening to your material in your class. Michigan's a little bit different in this sense because I did not go to their classes, I didn't require it. And the reason being is that I actually went through their old program and some of the classes are actually overlapped and I even know some of the professors that are teaching uh, their current classes. So I have even a deeper understanding and a deeper depth and knowledge of these courses as I actually took some of these courses. So the first thing is I do require to be on campus to actually be in the classroom and hear your professors talk. Okay, this is an expense for the universities, right? It costs them money to bring me up, to talk to them, to go through the process. The reason I do this is I don't think that you should be able to list programs on your website and say, hey, I'm teaching stochastic calculus. And then you teach the class, but you're teaching it at a very high level and you skim over a lot of stuff and it's not very deep and rigorous. For a student who's going to be educated and spending 70, 80, $100,000 on a master's, right? I feel a great burden on me to give you real advice and real education here. Just reviewing websites is really hard. Universities have gotten really smart uh, they've changed a lot of the class titles to match each other. Uh, a lot of the descriptions are similar, but again, the coursework's not going to be the same between different programs. And I've seen this because I've heard complaints from students who have emailed me and said, Dimitri, I went to this program, uh, it's top rated, and they said X, Y, and Z, and that's not how it was. And then I've kind of reviewed that and I'm like, yeah, it makes sense, which textbook are you using? And they'll say, hey, I'm using this textbook. And I'm like, that's a business version, it's not an actual math version. And that leads me to my second point here. Besides sitting in the classrooms, I require that the university sends me a list of all the textbooks from their core courses. So I actually know most of these textbooks. So I'm just sitting here working on stuff. I have a lot of these textbooks because I went to these programs. Um, I also just buy new textbooks for reading, for work, for personal interests. So I try to go through the majority of the textbooks or I try to get references to the textbooks and pull out pieces of the textbook to read and see what's actually being taught. So this gives me a lot of the rigor portion. Um, I do have a questionnaire for them that they also fill out. So I ask all these different questions before I go. And then they fill out the questionnaire. Some of these questions are around salary and job placement, as I mentioned. Um, some of these are going to be around education and rigor. So one of the questions I do ask is how much or how many percentages or how many staff members um, are actually industry practitioners. Also, how much research and publications has your department put out in regards to financial engineering, quantitative finance. So I think these are crucial points to have good professors, good teachers. Um, again, coming onto campus and reviewing that is a very important piece, at least in my mind. All right, so now besides the campus visit and the classroom checks and all that, and besides the questionnaire, um, I also did student interviews. So I asked the program, I said, I don't care who you send, you can handpick them, um, you can ask for volunteers, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, pick some students and I want to interview them. So I sat down in a classroom at the University of Michigan 
and a bunch of students sat down in front of me and I already had all the answers to the questionnaires that the university filled out. So I'm trying to essentially read the lies if they're telling any between what's going on in the questionnaire, what are the students saying? Do the students like the program? What do they like about the program, right? A lot of my questions are focusing around the questionnaire itself, around the academic, the education, um, the professors, career placement and job placements part of that questionnaire. Um, it's also what I talk to the students about, right? What resources are they giving you? Like, what are you doing? Can I see your resumes? Things like that. So I'm looking at different aspects, trying to like weed out um, what is truth and what is lies. Um, one of my largest concerns in general with doing ranking systems, especially when it's like an online one and you try to cover all the programs, you ask for all this information, this data, but one of the big issues is, is that you can't verify that, right? And I mean, I guess you could ask them for a list of all these names and companies and salaries. But again, you'd have to ask for all that personal information. And then you probably have to follow up and call these individuals and ask. And I don't think people want their names being distributed and their information, even if it's just to a small private group uh, of people for the reviews. Um, one of the other questions in the questionnaire that I ask is I want to know what is the percentage of students that you place are in quantitative finance roles. And then I ask the students similar questions to see what they tell me, right? Are these students being placed in marketing analytics, traditional finance, investment banking, tech, for example, or are they actually going into financial engineering, risk management, quantitative finance, right? Where are these students going? I want to know, is your program really training people for financial engineering, computational finance, and risk management? Or are you just giving these people general skills or business classes worse and then shipping them out to business jobs, right? These are things that I actually looked at during the review of the process. So if you would want a review or you'd like a review, uh, I would recommend that you think about deeply that I would have to come out, interview your students, sit in your classrooms, you have to fill out my questionnaire, send me a list of all your textbooks, for example, right? I want to know what's really going on inside these programs. I don't want a fluffy, high-level view, and I want different perspectives. I want the program, and I want the students to be involved in this process. So now to answer the question, Dimitri, why do you not like to do rankings? Why do you not like to review these programs in a lot of different ways? And I had this discussion with a program director from a different university, and they said, why don't you think about maybe like having the Dimitri Bianco or the Fancy Quant channel like stamp of approval. And I've thought about it and that, that's something that I would consider. Um, but I don't like ranking programs. I don't like recommending programs for a variety of reasons. So I look at this from the student perspective and I look at this from the industry perspective and I don't really care about the university in the middle. So I'm just being honest with you guys here. The students are spending a lot of their personal money to go to these programs. Um, a lot of these students, for example, or at least a portion of these students were like myself, where you're taking out loans, or perhaps your family is sending you from another country. And this might be essentially their life savings to send their kid to another country for an education. And if you're presenting your program as one program, and realistically you are lying on your statistics, or you're lying about your program, or you're not teaching what basically you're stating that you're teaching, or it's not the same rigor, I think this is a vast disservice to students and to the industry as a whole. I think it's a big lie. And I think a lot of these institutions should have to pay up for this. So whether they're being sued and have to pay out fines, whether the programs are closed, I definitely think all these programs that lie on a lot of these forms, which I don't know if it's zero programs lying, one program lying, I don't know, 10 programs lying. I don't think universities should be involved in a lot of the ways that rankings are done. Again, it's hard to get around this. And yes, there are ways you could improve them, for example, but it's really challenging. But at the end of the day, I think the student takes the worst part of this from programs that essentially aren't being fully honest in what they're doing. So even if you teach a program and even if you're honest on the class listings, but if you label it as financial engineering and it's not really financial engineering, I don't think you should be able to market it and list that. I think the accreditations of the university system or even the universities as a whole should review these figure this out and close these programs down or just relabel them something different. Yes, risk management in the sense of quantitative finance is an actual thing. It's not just like this fluffy like business notion of like, oh, we're managing risk and now we did value at risk. Like it's an actual study. You guys need to label things correctly and don't lie to students. Um, this also makes it challenging and frustrating on the industry practitioner side because now I have all these students coming out 
I'm trying to hire them. They're listing all these buzzwords and then you look at the program and you're like, wow, it looks amazing. Great job placement, right? People must be dying to get these students. And then you get one of these students sometimes and they just don't perform well. And then you think, well, maybe it's just the student wasn't a good cultural fit. So you look at a different student and then that student doesn't perform well. And it's from the same program and you're like confused, like what's going on here? You start realizing maybe that program's not the best program we should be hiring from. It costs the corporations a lot of money in training. It costs the corporations a lot of money in the fact that you either have to just have substandard employees who aren't performing, or you have to retrain people, or you have to fire them and go hire another person, which costs more money and more time. So on both sides here, the student and the industry, I don't think a lot of programs, I shouldn't say a lot of programs, I don't think some programs are doing honest dealings in the way that they're running programs. Um, that being said, from a school perspective here, since I mentioned I don't really care about the schools as much, um, the school perspective is different. So I get that the school is trying to make money. Okay, I understand that. Um, a lot of programs, though, are actually in public institutions. So it leads me to the point that I understand you have to essentially break even and you have to provide some profits, right? helps keep the program going, helps do like other activities. There's all kinds of costs involved in running these programs like job placement and educating students and bringing in new professors and industry practitioners and all that. I get it. I'm not saying you shouldn't make money doing it, but at the end of the day, I think you should be ethical and moral in the way that you do the program. So for me, I, that's why I don't like to rank them and I don't like to review people because also a lot of these programs will change. So you might have a program that looks horrible one year and then they get a new director or maybe the current director says, hey, let's change some stuff up. Let's add some industry practitioners. Uh, let's do some more rigor. Let's focus on this topic and that topic. And they really dive deep and make the program better over the years. So I don't want to give them a bad ranking. That's why QuantNet and RISNet do rankings every year because programs change. Uh, the inverse can occur as well. A program can be amazing. It can be stellar. Uh, it can be very focused. And then it Things can change, it can lose traction, reduce educational rigor. And at the end of the day, you end up with a program that's just not very good. So in that sense, right, I wouldn't want programs to be flying me out every year to review them. I don't have the time to do that. It's another constraint. Um, but I do enjoy going to the campus. Like Michigan's review was a lot of fun for me. I was on campus, I was with the students again. Uh, it's been like five years since I went back to Michigan. So yes, I went to the University of Michigan. But I enjoyed being involved in helping the programs and I would like to help more programs. But again, they need to take the advice that industry practitioners give them instead of focusing on the fact of sometimes they're trying to make money or they're trying to seem like it's a better program to attract more students. Anyways, that's kind of my review on how I do these processes. Um, again, I don't know if I'll end up doing a stamp of approval or anything, but I would like to cover some programs, talk to them, uh, advise students like this program is really good for these types of skills but it's not as good at these other things. Uh, and these are the strengths of the program. These are the weaknesses and let students do the actual choosing of where to apply. Um, again, if you want to be reviewed by me, you'll have to email me. I'll probably put like a link or something below, but you can contact me through LinkedIn as well. Um, I do require on, on campus visits and sites. I do require I go to classes. I do require I talk to students at minimum of three to five. At Michigan, I believe I have about five to seven. So. If you wanna be reviewed, it's a lot of rigor, it's a lot of headaches. Uh, sure, it might be worth it, but that's just kinda of how I do my review process and that's why I don't like to do ranking. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>